Oh, wow. Now. If you're. How do I put this? If you know anything about California, this headline should not surprise you. Why? Because California likes to tax everything. To include rainwater, apparently. Maybe that's not California, I don't know. But let's uh, continue it from the LA Times by George Skelton. Today at 12.05 a.m., Kind of a weird time to publish an article. <laughs> Sacramento wants to tax soda, tires, guns, water, pain pills, lawyers, car batteries. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Uh, anything else? Um, okay. Uh, let's see how this guy starts this article off. To plagiarize T.S. Eliot. April is the cruelest month. Not according to Julius Caesar, the Ides of March. <laughs> but not for the reasons the poet wrote. Rather, for all the taxes. Wow. Okay, by April 10th, Californians must pay their local property taxes. What? Okay, by April 10th, Californians must pay their property. Okay, I get that. All right. Five days later is a deadline for filing state and federal income tax returns. Yeah. Also, the state and feds want any initial pre-tax payment that's required on current earnings. Ugh. <clears throat> so tax collectors get three swings at us this month. No, not at me. I'm a former Californian. It's, it's them, not me. It's a perfect storm for millions of Californians because if the federal tax overhaul enacted in 2017 by the Republican Congress and President Trump. Oh, gotta blame Trump for something, right? For the first time, deductions for state and local taxes on federal returns are limited to $10,000. Big whoop. That's much less than Californians have been ducting in high, this high-tax state. Ah, therein lies the key right here. That's much less than Californians have been ducting in this high-tax state. Wah. If you lived in Florida, you'd have to deal with this. But hey, you know, whatever. It's the sunshine. Yeah, you, you get sunshine of Florida, dick. Anywho. Oh, here it gets better now. Making the bite even sharper for salaried employees who receive a WT, the non-reimbursed job expenses are no longer deductible on federal tax returns. Okay. That hits teachers particularly hard because they often buy their own classroom supplies and have been deducting the costs. Call me, call me the big a-hole here. I just... So it is. So blame a tax shaft on Trump and Republicans. Up ah, there it is. Liberal. <clears throat> now, something close to home here is that in the past, when I would file my tax returns, the lovely wife and I, we would get 4K, 5K sometimes. But now this year, we only got 1000 something I don't have a problem with that why we got to keep more of our money so not a problem but in California under Democrats of course it's tax 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 a drip and a drop nickel and a dime all the time <laughs> that's not a political statement it's a fact of course it is if you live in California. Get ding dong. Not all taxes are evil. <laughs> okay. Some are justified. But many are warranted. And others are eye rollers. 
Mr. Skelton, you're a frickin' eye roller. How you write this article? There's too many... Okay, I'm a history history major in grad school. So, reading this right here, I know what you're going to say. Well, this is not a history paper. Shut up. Terrible writing. One of the more controversial and annoying taxes currently being proposed is a state levy on sugary soft drinks. More on that later. See, this is where you put a semicolon because this just sounds so stuck. Anyways, here's an eye roller. A bill that would authorize San Francisco to turn its crooked Lombard Street, a tourist attraction after so many movie appearances, into a toll road, maybe even requiring reservations. <laughs> well played, California. Well played. Think they have a traffic jam now on weekdays? Wait until cars are lined up behind a toll gate. <laughs> oh my god. There are a whole bunch of taxing ideas in the capital. On new tires, firearms, water, prescription painkillers, lawyers, car batteries, corporations based on the CEO pay. Oh god. Hey, CL Con Valley. <laughs> Keep giving money to those Democrats. Yeah, yeah. The state's worth more than $3.5 million. Oil and gas extraction. This is where he needs an and instead of a, a period. And the list goes on. What a ding dong. The oil and gas extraction tax is long overdue. Oh, really? That's an opinion. Are you writing an article for fact or is this an opinion? I don't know. Opinion piece mean. Whatever. We're the only major oil producing state without one. It would raise an estimated $1.5 billion a year. Yeah, maybe for that first year. Then after that, it would decrease because people would move out of the state and go, you know what, I'm going to go to the fracking states. Good God almighty. Ugh. The California Tax Foundation has counted more than $6.2 billion worth of tax increase proposals spend pending in the legislature. It expects your fear to grow substantially as bills are amended with details. Polls show that California voters only think they're overtaxed. No surprise there. <laughs> I don't care about California. You guys can become our own country for all I give a crap. <laughs> when voters are asked recently by the Public Policy Institute of California whether they paid more or less in state and local taxes than they should, the answers were more 63%, right amount 32%, less 4%. I guess 36% are freaking morons. Ask whether federal tax changes had a positive or negative impact on families. Voters replied, 80% positive. Huh, I thought that'd be lower. Negative, 35%. I thought that'd be higher. No effect, 42%. Eh. As of the April 15th deadline looms, Many Californians are complaining that the state and local tax systems and the impacts of recent changes in federal law. PPIC President Mark Baldassari says. Hey, I, you know what? It's kind of easy for me to just say, oh, too bad, California, but I kind of feel sorry for him that they voted these... Doomkoffs have voted themselves into this tax rate system that they got going on. So I don't, on one hand, I'm, I feel sorry for them. On the other hand, I don't because they did this. They elected the people in the state system, in the state and local governments into, the, into their positions. This is what happens. And you're going to complain? This guy here would complain. Come on. What part of tax fatigue don't these lawmakers understand? Well, I, I have a reason why they don't understand. It's because they keep... It's like every time you order chicken noodle soup at a restaurant, some guy comes out of the back of the restaurant and cracks you over the skull with a pipe wrench. For me, after the second time, I'm going to order the split pea. But apparently California orders keep ordering that good old chicken noodle soup and getting cracked over the skull with a freaking pipe wrench. But hey, that's just me. 
its political map practice, asserts Democratic consultant Steve Mavig Mav Iglio, referring to the proposed tax soda tax that he's fighting against on behalf of the beverage industry. I find that interesting. <clears throat> The bill, AB 138, is carried by the Assemblyman Richard Bloom. What a, sounds like a dick. With backing from California Medical and Dental Associations. Ha! Ah, special interest! <laughs> We're not a part of the special interest! Uh huh. It would hike the tax on sugary soda by 2 cents an ounce, or 24 cents for a 12 ounce can. Huh. That would raise, reportedly apparently, around three to four billion a year to spend on health programs. Okay. Uh -huh. But the tax main purpose, backers say, is to discourage unhealthy soda drinking by raising the price, just as California has done by jacking up tobacco taxes. You could jack up tobacco prices to X amount. You could jack up the marijuana prices in that state to X amount. People are going to still buy it. Why? They like smoking. Children are consuming over 30 gallons of sugary drinks a year. Source. And about half of the adults, two-thirds of youth, consume a sugary drink every day. And sugar drinks are the single largest source of added sugars in the American Medical Pitch continues. Source. See, there's no source in there. There are also the anti-soda bills. One is an anti-big gulp measure that would ban soda contain... Oh, there's a the, there's the New York thing. Uh, let's continue on. This is getting boring. Uh, both, let's see, right. We're, sing, we're singling out one product without looking at another. There's a former sugar in the Right. How about chocolate shakes, cotton candy, or the yummy stuff sold in the ballpark? At least they have some nutritional value. The anti-soda lottery answers. Both sides of the fight, beverage, our major political donor to capital. Meanwhile, there's this. I, I I'll tell you what's interesting about this whole article. They never talk to any, let's say, opposition, other than that Democrat, but that doesn't count. Any Republican opposition in California. <laughs> uh, Republican opposition in California. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, <laughs> I like how he ends this thing. He says the state should just leave us alone. Sometimes, well, that's a very libertarian thing to say. <laughs> you, you wacky liberal, back off on tax, tax, tax. April hits hard enough. <laughs> Only if you live in California, apparently. <laughs> the point is, is that if you live in California and you continue to live there, hey, <laughs> the joke's on you and you know what? Tough crap.